this morning. Um, I received a, a, a beautiful letter from a French lady asking about prayer. She'd been in a situation with someone dear to her where she thought she could help by prayer. And like many who, who try this, had been disappointed. Nothing seemed to happen. And so she wrote and asked uh, if I could um, shed some light on the subject of prayer. Well, this is indeed a question close to my heart because I've been exploring and trying to discover how to pray for most of my life. And I don't say I've reached the end of the journey yet, but perhaps I understand a bit more than I did as a young man. You see, if we enter into the conflict zone and say, I'm going to pray for a certain person, you identify this certain person, he's, let's say he's got some, he's, he's in trouble, some sort of mental trouble. If we hold this in mind, now what's going to happen? It gets bigger, doesn't it? The more you dwell on, on anything, it simply gets bigger. The mind will magnify it. The other day, uh, I showed you how St. George overcomes the dragon. The more you look at these works of darkness, the bigger they get, the more threatening they become. But if, you, if your focus is, is up here, and you look down on the world with this serene peace, you see that even dragons have their place. Waterfalls fall, don't they? Things happen, things break. When quarrels erupt. When the body is poisoned, it'll break up in a boil or cancer or something. So when the world is diseased, it'll break out into a war, it'll break out into something, or a virus, a plague, or something will happen. All these things are the consequence of what of what's, has been fed into the system, as it were. And in prayer, we simply, as it were, reverse the process, turn back to this. So to pray specifically for a situation that we consider bad, we want to be careful because you're then, if you're going to just give it attention, you're going to bring it into focus, aren't we? You're going to make it bigger, we're going to emphasize it. Let's turn back to this oneness. which is the reality of every situation. And the sort of, the, 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 um, the sting goes out of it. In this higher consciousness, you see, there's, there's really no thing, is there? It's consciousness. Things, you know, are a descent into matter, into material. And then indeed things matter. You come back to this, and there is no matter. Nothing matters. And because there's no thing, there's no thing to die, is there? There's no thing to get into trouble. There's nothing separate from this eternal completion, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Now look out on the world with that in your heart and your mind, and that's what you'll see. There's no darkness in the world at all, really. The darkness is simply absence of light. This is light. Turn away from it, we're in darkness. I've often demonstrated, haven't I, sitting in this church, how well, this, I've got so many lights beaming down on me, it's a bit difficult, but, but if I look primarily at this floodlight here, you see my face is lit, 
And if I turn away from it, my face is in shadow, isn't it? And then I cast the works of darkness, and everything's dark. I look at the world as a world of problems, of darkness, of this terrible world. What can I do about it? I enter into the darkness, and they often end up making matters worse, getting myself all screwed up. And if I turn back to the light, what happens to the darkness? so simple. Prayer is basically just turning back to God, you see. It's taking the worldly situation as it is, without comment, without criticism, without judgment, and just not so much turning it back, but we, we take it on ourselves as baggage. We sort of bear the burden of the world. All of us live in the world. We're all aware of what's happening in the world. And to a greater or lesser extent, we, 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 we bear it. And when we turn back to, to this one, what happens? It's lightened, isn't it? The burden is lightened. And eventually, you come to... There is no burden. It dissolves away, it dissolves into the light. If that's true for me, it's true for you. The only difference may be that I've realized it. Maybe you haven't, or only partially realized it. But the fact you're listening to this video shows you're interested. So I encourage you to pursue, pursue your spiritual practices. Keep asking these questions. And gradually you'll, you may realize what I've realized. That's why I come up to this church twice every day to pray. I call meditation, prayer, same thing. You are letting go, letting go me, me, which is the world really, let go, let go, and surrender to this higher reality. And an hour or so later, you feel better. And for 20, 25 years now, I've felt that prayer was my primary work. I know no better way of helping the world than to pray. I don't use words at all. I just let go. I surrender into thy hands, O Lord. Because I don't know what to do. God knows. We walk on very thin ice when we try to analyze too closely the way all these things are interlinked and I can only really offer a very general description of my own unfolding experience in these matters and what I've learned through my life. Yes, as you say, it, it seems um, because this is how most prayer is conducted, isn't it? Uh, you know, like a sort of shopping list presented to God. God bless mummy and daddy. That's how I started to pray. And for someone near and dear to us, we, we, we pray for them specifically. Um, down the church there, there's a big sort of display of uh, encouraging people to pray for this war that's going on now. Um, is that merely uh, <coughs> emphasizing uh, 
the apparent reality of this war, emphasizing our belief in it. Do you know, as a young man, when I first read that the world is illusion, I was deeply offended by this. I couldn't really accept it at all. And I still don't really like the world illusion to describe the world. Um, I was always impressed by the fact that we could have nightmares at night, all sorts of dreams. You wake up in the morning and what happens to them? By midday you've forgotten them. Where, they, where are they? Where have they gone? I look back on my own long life now and think of all the unhappiness I've had a lot. Pain, no end of pain. Where is it? It's all sort of forgotten. Look at history. It, Civilizations rise, fall, countless wars have been fought. Nothing new about war, was there? Well, of course, at the time, for people in it, it's totally real, isn't it? I know what it is to scream and squirm with pain. There's no doubt many people are doing now. At the moment, it's totally real. See, there are levels of reality, levels of consciousness. It's so helpful, I find, to think, see the whole world as levels of consciousness. Think of what a worm is consciousness, a worm in the ground. We talk of a worm's eye view of life, don't we? Hmm? What does a worm see of wars? come up through all the f levels of nature, plants, higher animals, eagles, eagles, worms, and somewhere along the way is man, man with all his complexity from the highest to the lowest. So we're all experiencing different levels of reality. <coughs> At the time, totally real. And higher up here, I'm talking about higher consciousness where in a way it all melts away, it all isn't as real as it seems. So we play our parts in this, in this, uh, in this what we call it. Think of how you watch a film, war film, you enter into it, you totally forget everything else. Hour, hour or two later, you come out, go to the kitchen, make a cup of tea or something. What happened to it? What's so real? So all our problems, illnesses, see, if you give them life, if you give them consciousness, they will they will develop. If you can look at them, just as I suggest you listen and look here, and you try to look at them without judgment, just as a phenomena, just as you can look at, you know the old saying, it's no use crying over spilt milk, you know? <laughs> if, there's a, if you've got a cup of milk and you spill it, you can look at it and it's a thing of, beauty, isn't it? It's perfectly there according to law. Every little wave, every drop has been scattered on the carpet and staining the carpet. You can either enter into despair about it and jump in. <laughs> you know, we still do that because this is, we function in the world. If someone's hurt, you help them. This is natural. You clean up the milk, but you can still see it as something of perfect lawfulness, perfect beauty perfection in its way. So human destruction happened. And then, uh, again, I've often referred to it, as I look back on my life, it seems like a great school that I've had to pass through, uh, including uh, many unpleasant, dreadful events, 
Some lot I've done myself with my own hands. I've got blood on my hands. I used to pray for specific things. And then I think I gradually began to think that God knows better than I do. Yes, I think that's helped me to, to move on from that. No, I never pray for anything to happen. I just surrender the whole situation, the whole, I surrender everything without qualification. Into thy hands, O Lord. Again, as a farmer, to start with, I wanted to change everything. I thought I could control disease and weeds and, and make the farm as I, as I saw it ought to be, without any parasites and things. And I realised it isn't so easy. And then, eventually, after many years, I came to realise that nature knows best. I started interfering less and trusting more. When I was a little boy, I remember Dad would say, Now Mother knows best. And she did. And then I learnt nature knows best, and now I've come to realise that God knows best of all. And what happens is all according to this universal law of cause and effect. And the basic cause of this whole troubled world is me. And that's why when I pray, I surrender me. I try to surrender me. I try to surrender everything that we call this person of John Butler who thinks he's separate from God, you see. This is the basic um, error in human behaviour, which infects us like a disease, infects the whole world. This is why we live in a world of mortality that dies, which is not the real world. You find the real world when you come back to spirit. The other week I, I spoke of my experience of realising I couldn't walk across, this gra across the grass without hurting the grass. Why can't I be like a fairy? And I commend this to you. How can we live in this world without adding to the, without making it worse? Well, by coming back to spirit like a fairy. And then you'll find that Instead of force, it all becomes gentler, a matter of trust. How wonderful if we could walk through this world and see, do no harm, and moreover, see no harm. Because what we see, you see, is, is transmitted. You look at good, look at good in a person, and all, those, all your criticism melts away. Look at the goodness in them. Look at your worst enemy and see the goodness in him. Instead of just listening to some ignorant voice on the media, you know, adding to the condemnation. Be the light of the world. That's what Jesus tells us to do. Be the light. Be the light. Whenever you say see deaths, so inwardly change it to nobody dies. How can there be death? The eternal reality is the same for everybody. Nobody's ever died in reality. So that's prayer, my dears.
as I understand it anyway. To make whole be whole. And then, yes, yes, then when you look at this sick person on the bed, oh, I know, somebody wrote to me last night, said their aunt is dying, will I pray for them? Well, what do I do? What do I, what do I mean? I sit there in my chair and I f find this eternal presence. Well, his aunt's in it the same as I am, isn't she? Same as these poor people on the battlefield. If it's the truth for me, it's the truth. It radiates out, doesn't it? Where does it end? Spiritual work is a growth, is a, is a long, long process of e evolution, evolving into spirit, evolving from mortality to the eternal spirit. And of course all the, um, the husbanding of, of goodness and kindness in all its Benevolence is helpful along the way. Yes. Instead of criticizing, just feed in goodness. See the goodness in things. Every man has goodness as well as bad. Yes, indeed, you see the goodness, it draws it out of people, doesn't it? You see it for yourself, very simply demonstrated. Mother used to say to me, smile and the world smiles with you. Cry and you cry alone. Mention compassion, God, that's another. We to be compassionate means to share the burden, doesn't it? You take it on your own shoulders, you, you share the grief and the suffering, and it's part of what you lift up. So, in this way, you, you lighten the burden. This is prayer. Yes, of course, it seems like changing, but actually you're just returning to the eternal reality. <laughs> the, the, these, it's you know, commonly said, why does God allow it? And, you know, we, we always bringing God down to a human level of, of, of God will this and that. But see, the, the creation's already made, the creation is perfect. The only thing that makes it imperfect is me. You see, it's my own, my own fallen perception, you see, that, that, that projects darkness, and then hence darkness, and hence the works of dark. You return to this, and that's no longer operative. So the world's like a, like a, you know, like a, just comes back to its, like something coming back to its axis, comes back to its original axis. You know, it's extraordinary. In old age now, as my body gets ever less and uh, spirit grows ever more, it, it's very clear to see that, that, <coughs> that in this transition from a mortal body to an immortal, to immortality, the whole emphasis of the body just diminishes. It, uh, it's diffused, and, um, and so anyway, the whole world is. Um, what on earth is this world? What was it? What was it for? A great lesson in it was, it's <laughs> Words really fail. <laughs> Sometimes you just, all you can do is, is smile, really. You don't always feel like smiling, I know. Sometimes it's, you feel more like cry, crying. They say the angels weep, don't they? I dare say they do. 
passes, it comes to pass. But for sure, my dears, any young people asking yourselves the great question that I asked as a young man, what can I do, how can I help the world? I do commend the work of prayer, however you start. <laughs>